Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm picking up where we left off with recursion. And the purpose of this video will mostly be to show you that recursion is really just another mechanism for creating loops. Now the problem that we're going to be solving is we have this separators list, which is commenting out just to make my linter happy. And we want to create strings based on each element in this separators array by applying it as an argument to the join function for our words array so that we have a new string separated of words separated by spaces, separated by dashes, and then separated by this weird hat ampersand hat thing. And one way you could do this with a for loop would obviously be to have for i and then map over, or sorry, <laughs> iterate uh, over separators and then iterate over words with a 4j or a 4k or however many for loops you decide you need and that would produce your desired result. Now as I just alluded to there, in functional programming we have access to the pure version which is map. So we can just call dot map and that will allow us to transform a list such as separators and produce a new list which will be of strings which are, is going to be words joined by whatever separator we passed in. Now, we are going to still use our recursive join as our inner loop. And to get started on that, we need to give it access to whatever separator that we want it to use in its current iteration. So the easiest way to do that is to just wrap join in another function. And so this will be called join with and I'm going to give it the argument s for separator and I will just indent that. I'm going to remove our edge cases here just because honestly I know I'm not passing in anything goofy like no arguments right now. And so now it's going to have access it's going to have access to the s argument which is going to be the separator value. So we can create a separator value, and we'll put that, uh, I'm thinking, oops, we'll put that inside of our join. So this is going to be the string that we return in our base case. So let's do let string equal, and then this will just be a template string because they are awesome. And we'll separate that with our separator and then our second value. Bada bing, bada boom. Remove that. We'll return string. And we're not actually going to use join with space anymore. This function is going to return our join. So we're manually currying this function, you could say. Uh, so join with is going to take a separator, and then it will return a new function, join, which will be our loop. And so join will be expecting the list of words. And so we've now assigned this base value for returning, but we also need to correctly uh, call our recursive, or re correctly make our recursive call. And so we no longer have a function called join with space. So let's remove that. We're just going to recursively call join. And instead of passing in the first and then the join of the rest of the elements, we will just pass in as the first element in our returned list the uh, base case string, and then the rest of the list. So we'll just join the first two elements with our separator, and then pass in the new list as that first two elements joined, and then the rest of the list. So it'll join the first two, oops, it'll join the first two, and then it'll receive a new list with the first two already joined. So it'll join those first two that are joined with what was the third element. Those will be joined, and then it'll join that with the fourth element, and so on and so on until the entire list has been joined with the separator that was passed in. And the benefits of having a linter, unexpected token. If you don't use a linter, highly recommend it. I think this is, this is great. Uh, it's just slow, I think, because I'm recording. There we go. All right, so now we have a function called join with. And so join with is going to take our separators. And the, as I said, the best way to pass in 
our separator, each separator is going to be by mapping over separators because we want to create a new list of all the strings. So we're going to map over separators. This is going to pass in a separator to join with every single time. So the result at this point would just be a list or an array, sorry, of functions. And those functions are all join functions, which are waiting for words. And they have a stored value for s. And each one is either a space, a dash, or this weird thing. And so now we have a list of functions, so we can just map over that list, call that function f, and then we can just call f with words passed in. And assuming I have done nothing horribly wrong, let's run this. Bada bing, bada boom, we get our list of strings. Separate, the words are separated by spaces, dashes, or the weird ampersand hat thing. And so the point of this video is really just to show you that recursion is not scary. It just creates another loop, and you can treat it just like any other loop. And so returning a recursive call just allows you to return any other loop, or works the same way as if you were returning any other looping mechanism. And this is really a really powerful pattern that you can use to create things like trees, which I'll show you in a, super, in a future video, uh, or in this case, just to be used as a inner loop inside of a map. So if you're new to recursion and this video just made no sense to you, as I mentioned, I have a previous video on recursion that leads up to the starting code for this video. So check that out in the link down below if you need to see that. If you want the code for this video, it'll also be in the link below or in the description box below. Leave a comment if you have any questions and any suggestions for future videos, I am open to them. Apologies for a bit of a delay. I was out on vacation and it was great, but I'm back now making some videos. So I'll see you in the next one. Happy to have everybody around.